If you have your Bibles, we're in a, a study of John. We're doing the truly, truly studies out of the book of John. I'm in the, I'm in the eighth chapter, which is the, not to get too complicated with you about it, but this is the, this, this sermon is the third of five sermons that was preached by Jesus in what was called the Temple Discourse. You're familiar with that because we've been in the 8th chapter. And, and in the 8th chapter, uh, Jesus ga- gives three truly, truly. Now, a truly, truly, uh, it's a phrase that says, truly, truly, I say to you. Jesus used it in a most unique teaching way to teach uh, messianic doctrines of importance. They were used in the Old Testament, but they were always put at the end of a doxology or a, a great doctrinal message. Jesus flipped that thing and put it on the front side, and he doubled it. And that's a unique teaching style. And so John is the only one that really records it um, in, a, in that way, that he makes, he makes a really big issue out of it. Um, 11 out of 21 chapters has truly trulys in them. And so we've looked at chapter 1, 3, 5, 6, 8. We're into 8 now. And chapter 8, he, he did a triple. He did three of them. And we, last time, we, 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 he did it in uh, verse 34, if you have your Bibles open. He, there's one in 34. Today we're looking at 51. And next week we'll look at 58. These are, these are, are nuggets of messianic truth. That's the power behind a truly, truly, I say unto you in the book of John, you're getting... You're really getting something that's um, a chunk of gold, and it's it's uh, it's so. Anyhow, we're in the. This is the third of five temple discourses. John eight is, and um, notice our title today: Never See Death. So let's let's go in and look at John eight. I'm going to read it, forty eight. Now, notice on your paper if you have a study guide that I broke this passage, 48 through uh, 52, I believe I did, 52, I broke it into four ideas. Notice on your paper, the Jews start calling them names. You know, when people call people names, it reflects your character, not the other person, doesn't it? Uh, so don't, when other people call you names, remember, they're attacking themselves, their insecurities and all the other things about their life it's really not about you. It's about them. So don't take all that stuff personal. It's hard not to, but it reflects badly on them, not on you. So you always have that when people, when they, when they, when they have run out of good things to say, when they've run out of anything in their mind that would be good to say or counter counter discussions, they always turn to name calling or cursing. It's all part of the same thing. They always turn to it and it reflects their character has nothing to do with you. At this point, when they get to that level, the conversation is over, as you know. Anything constructive is over, as you well know. And now they're just out to attack you. So, you know, smart people, they just walk away from it. They just walk away from it. Uh, and, and listen to me. Can I tell you, never, never, never take it serious. Take what they're doing serious, but don't take the name calling. Don't go like, well, they're probably right. I'm probably that person. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, so in... In verse 48, they start calling him names. So let's look at that. In, in verse 48, they start calling him names. The Jew, because, see, this has been going on since the beginning. They, you know, this whole thing started with them bringing the woman caught in adultery and trying to bring charges on him. But this is how bad this is going to get. And this is uh, the Feast of the Tabernacles. This is the third of great five national messages. Jesus came and preached five great national messages. 
and these leaders, this is what, but anyhow, verse 48. The Jews answered and said to him, uh oh, the Jews answered and said to him, so let's go back to verse 45. Let's go back to verse 45. Because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you can make, watch these two questions. See, the first one's an exclamation. The first one is, but because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Now he asks two questions. Verse 49. Uh, 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 verse, I mean, verse 46. Which one of you convict me of sin? If I speak the truth, truth, why do you not believe me? Then 47. He who, now he gives them the answer. <laughs> uh, makes an exclamation, asks two questions, and gives them the answer. He says, he who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear them because you are not of God. Whoa! Guess what they do now? They bring out all the oh, name calling. Watch this name calling. The Jews answered and said to him, verse 48, do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan? I mean, that's racial slur calling. That's, that's calling him the scum of the earth. And have a demon. Or, listen, have we not said that you're a Samaritan and that you're demon possessed? I mean, people, how much proof, more proof do you need? A whole lot more. If I'm the guy who he just healed who was blind, you're going to have to give me more because this man just healed me. I was blind from birth. I was crippled and he healed me. Listen, we all should be from Samaria and demon possessed if that's true. But remember their name calling. Their name calling. Then, that's verse 48. Then I saw something else. I saw Jesus bring a charge in verse 49. Jesus answered. Jesus answered. Listen, the Jews have an answer. Jesus has a counter answer. Jesus answered, I do, I do not have a demon, but I do honor my father, and you dishonor me. That name calling. He didn't get caught up in the name calling. You're a Samaritan. You're a, you're a demon possessed. He didn't do that. There's nothing gained. When people call you names, to turn around and call them names. You know, we've all got names. <laughs> right? None of us are short on names. You don't get nothing from that. There's no better. So he does, listen, he says, well, I do not have a demon, but I do honor my father, and you dishonor me. You dishonor me. So he brings a charge. He brings an honor brings honor into the whole thing. There's no honor in you people. You're the, you're the most dishonest people. You're dishonest with yourself and therefore everybody else. You know, the only people who can be dishonest with you are the ones that are dishonest with themselves. You do know that. So he does that in verse 49 and then 50. I do not seek my own glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Now look at verse 51. He gives a conditional promise. I don't want you to miss that because this is the truly, truly. This is truly, truly. Watch this in verse 51. Truly, truly, I say to you. See, that word truly, in the Hebrew, that's a man. That's a man. And there's two of them. And the first one is God speaking to you, which says truly, a man, which means and it shall be so. What I'm going to tell you, it shall be so. The second amen is your response to what this should be, should be, so let it be so. Truly, truly, I say to you, if, that's the third class condition maybe, if anyone, anyone, if anyone, including those who are calling him Bad names. I see, this is the way 
See, this is a religious group of people. This is how they call you by bad names. Okay? This is bad names. They should have come where I came from. These wouldn't have been bad names. <laughs> These were, they wouldn't have been bad names at all. If anyone, if anyone keeps my word, watch this now, he shall never see death. This word never is a double negative. It's ukme. This is a never that never, never. It's a never, never. If you said, you mean never? He would say, I mean never, never. They would say, you mean never? He said, I mean never, never, never. Do you mean never? I mean never, 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 never. You see, after a while, you get tired of hearing about it. You mean, you mean, uh-huh, I mean never. See, I don't care what you come up with. This word never means I don't care what you come up with. I don't care. Oh, you can write a book on it. But it won't matter because this is never. There's no exceptions to this. This word never means no exceptions. You will never, 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 <laughs> never see death. See, in a conditional clause, you have an if and a then. Don't you walk away with this. This, is, this could be, well, the gate question to lunch. If I say to you, never see death, is based on what? Never see, based on what Jesus said, not on what you, th what, what you think he said. Based on what Jesus said, you will never see death if what? What did he tell you? The first half of that verse is the secret. You will never see death if what? If you keep his word. This word, this word keep is a military idea. It's sentry duty. It's to guard with your life. To guard with your life, sentry duty. It's a military word. Tereo. To guard. Never take your eyes off it. Never go to sleep. Be alert. It's important that you guard it because you're guarding something that wants to take your life and others. If you keep my word, if you guard my word, the word that I'm teaching you, what I'm telling you is the absolute truth. If you keep, if you guard with your life the word, you will never see death. He says, see, the word guard means to guard so that we will not see death. Now, do you understand the guard duty? Well, those, have, those of us that pull military hitch, we really know this well. Those who don't just get the picture. You will never see death, but it's conditional. If what? Say there's always, it's an if what? You will never see death. That's the second part of it. If you guard my words, if you guard my word, you will never see death. If you do sentry duty on the things I teach you. Jesus said, I came into the world to save sinners. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. Jesus taught Jesus taught that God's love is demonstrated towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You believe that, you will never see death. Here's another thing. The word see, that's not a typical word. 
That's not a typical word for see. Typical word for see is I see with my eye, I see with my mind. Neither one of those are used here. Blippo is not used. I see with my eye. Horeo is not used. I see with my mind's eye. Neither of those two words are used. These are the most f common words in the Greek language, blippo and horeo, that's used to see something. To see it, I actually saw it, or I, I've, got, I've got the picture. I see what you're trying to tell me. Neither one of those are used. No, this is a word, treo, T-H-E-O-R-E-O, -E treo. This is a word that means to have a personal experience, a personal experience, a hands-on kind of thing. The word for death is interesting because it's not the typical word. It's not the word for physical death. There is a Greek, there is a Greek word uh, for that. Necros is a word that's used for physical death. That's not the word. The word that's used here is always used in a spiritual way. This is the word thanatos, T-H-A-N-A-T-O-S. Thanatos is a Greek word that refers to spiritual connotations of death. Here's what he said. If you will embrace the words that I've come to teach you, they are words of life, not death. If you guard these words of life, you will find that you will never personally experience spiritual death. Spiritual death, for example, wherefore is by one man, Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin into the world, and death by sin, Thanatos, and so it passed upon all men. Christ came to remove the Thanatos death from mankind. But you've got to believe what he says. He said, I have come to die on a cross for your sins to be buried and raised from the dead the third day. I've come to fulfill the scriptures on the Messiah. What is my purpose for coming in the world? To go to the cross on your behalf so that you could have atonement with God because you're separated from God because of Adam's sin. And the only way that you can come to God is through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. And no man can find God. The answer to what is life, what is truth, what is the way? It is found in me. I am the way. I am the truth. Who, who is the way? The way is not a thing. The way is a person. The truth is not a thing, it's a person. The life is not a thing, it's a person. I am the way. I am the truth. How is that possible? Because this is the God-man that came, became flesh and bore our sins on his flesh to remove the principle of death from the human life. The principle of death. Spiritual death. You will never see death, the death that's on you until Christ removes it. And if you die in this world not having believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ, that spiritual death will now become the second spiritual death of your life and you will be cast into the lake of fire at the end of the great white throne judgment of Revelation 20, if you want to go back and read it later today. It's hard to get people to read Revelation 20 when they've skipped the rest of the book. <laughs> I'm probably the only guy in the whole wide world that couldn't get the answers in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and actually went and read Revelation 20 when I was told, to re if you want to know what you're going to get if you reject Christ, read Revelation 20. I was actually one of those guys that read it, and then I, the, the fear of God fell all over me. I went, holy catfish. I don't know what a lake of fire is, but I don't want to go there. Come on, let's go swimming. Oh, yeah, where are we going? To the lake of fire. Won't that be fun? Are you nuts? I mean, that's the nuttiest thing I've ever heard in my whole life. Why would you not? 
Why would you not believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day? Why would you not buy into it right now at 13 years old, at 16 years old, at 35, 85? I don't care. Listen, it's never too late. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man can come to the Father except through me. I mean, you, oh, we go, let's go swimming in the lake of fire. Hey, they go, are you nuts? That's what's going to happen to you if you don't believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I'm telling you the absolute truth, right? I'm not asking for consent on this thing. That's it. This is a conditional promise. This truly, truly, I say unto you is unique in that it is a conditional promise. That's a third-class condition. It depends on your volition. I tell you, the saddest day in my life as a pastor is when I go to a funeral and everybody in the family of the person believes they've gone to hell. Do you know how terrible that funeral is? That is a, that's, that is a, a tough funeral when everybody in the family believes that. And wouldn't listen. Don't let that be your person, whether you're here today or you're on the internet. Boy, I am telling you the absolute truth. I am telling you the absolute truth. And and look down down and when we go a little further, the Jews have an answer to him. The Jews answered and said to him, Now we know that you are demon possessed. He tells them the truth. And their answer to him, let's go swim in the lake of fire. I'll do backflips. I'll show you my high dive. Well, you're going to have to show me the low one. Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and the prophets also. And you say, if anyone keeps my word, he will never taste of death. Listen to me. Is that what Jesus said? I'm going to ask you now, look, is that what Jesus said? That ain't what he said. That is not what he said. Why aren't you paying attention? Are you that hungry? I'll let you go in a minute. I'll let you go right now. You think it's breakfast. I can't let you go at breakfast. That's not what Jesus said. Is that what Jesus said? He did not say that. They misquoted him. Listen. Listen to me now. Because you're missing this whole thing today. I don't know why. I don't know if I can talk more plain than I'm talking. I could probably get a little louder. Listen. You will never die if what? Listen to me now. You will never die if what? If you what? If you guard, right? If you guard my words. If you pay to the details of what I'm telling you. Do you understand that? Then you will never personally experience spiritual death. But in order for that to happen, you've got to pay attention to the details of my words. You've got to be a, a student of the teaching of Jesus Christ. The scriptures, you understand? They didn't pay a bit of attention to that. He gave them a truly, truly, just as I gave you. You didn't pay any more attention to it than they did. So before we are too critical about them, we need to do a self-examination because that's not what he said. He used a word C that was that should never have been translated C.
It is not a C word. Veil is not a C word. It's a hands-on word. It's a personal word. It's all connected to if you guard the details of my words. So what do they say? They think they're quoting them. But they haven't paid attention to the details of the word. They haven't taken guard, guard his word. Guard the details of his word. Guard the details of his word, and you will never see death. Guard the details of his words. And he used the word, thereo. Thereo. It's a key word. They misquote him in verse 20. They use the word taste, like you're about to do today. The banana pudding. There'll be one soul down there disappointed if I don't have any banana pudding. <laughs> I have primed this pump for weeks. I've even got a guard downstairs in case banana pudding comes in to pull me a bowl off. <laughs> That's the word guard. See, they, he used the word G-E-U-O-M-A-I. means to taste. It don't mean necessarily eat it. It's a taste. Would you like a piece of this? Let me taste it first. Okay. It's not what he said. Even you understand T-H-E-O-R-E-O -E -E is not the same as G-E-U-O-M-A-I, right? <laughs> Ta -da! <clears throat> they misquote him. They misquote him. You know why? Because as Jews, they have uncircumcised ears and hearts. Stephen told them that in the 7th chapter 51. And they picked up stones and killed them. That's who he's talking to. And you know it. You know who these people are because they're callous to the truth. They don't pay attention. Listen, the worst day in your life to come in here is when you think you know what I'm t saying ahead of me saying it. A student comes in here ready to learn, and the teacher has come to teach them something new, not something old. Come bring you leftover food? Calloused ears and hearts. Jesus, Jesus responds, Jesus responds. And then, of course, they go on, and I don't want to go on any further with it. Let me, let me share a few things to you. I, I've already told them. I'm just going to share a few things. One, just, bef just before these Jews started name-calling Jesus, he warned them of their spiritual problem with negative volition towards God's word. I read verse 45, 46, 47. He made an exclamation, asked him two questions, gave him an answer, and boy, did it stir them up. They started calling them names when he got through. Jeez, I don't know. I'm thinking as a teacher, he's, is, 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 is he put together solid internally? He just goes right on teaching. I've seen mamas do that. Mamas, they just, you talk about people who can do a lot of things at one time. Multitask is a mama. They, they, can, they got a baby here uh, hungry and crying and the telephone over here and they're making a, they're, yes, I, I, uh, you know, they're in the pharmacy or something and then the husband comes in and wants to know where lunch is and the other kid's crying and the house is burning down and I can handle it. <laughs> that little mama, it's amazing to me. 
I don't know. I, I, Angie calls me, and they, uh, both kids are screaming. And she's talking to me. Uh, yes, Dad. Um, this is, <laughs> and I'm going, I can't hear you. <laughs> and the kids are screaming. What? <laughs> you do not hear them? Yes, but I can kind of do this too, Dad. I'd like to have a conversation with you, and I want... Jane, would you scream a little bit so I can have a conversation? <laughs> Let her know what I'm putting up with. Scream a little bit. <clears throat> I don't know people. They get into name calling. Listen to verse 47. He who is of God, he who has positive listen at God consciousness, he who is positive God, hears the words of God. I speak only the words of God. I don't speak nothing else. You're lucky. I'm not smart enough to teach anything but the Bible. I mean, you're lucky. I mean, it's not that smart. I mean, I know that. So I just hide in the Word of God. He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear. Because you are not of God. The proof's in the pudding. You know, I grew up, everybody said, the proof's in the pudding. I said, well, pass me the pudding, I'll say. I mean, everybody used to say to me as a kid, the proof's in the pudding. I had had no pudding all day and all week. What's the proof in the pudding? But after a while, as you grow up, you learn what they're talking about. They talk in riddles. Bill, did you grow up in a family talked in riddles? Of course. It wasn't because we came out of Chicago and Michigan. It was cultural. You had to figure out, you had to be smarter than your feet as a kid to figure out what they were taking from you or trying to tell you. Well, the proof's in the pudding. I don't know. At least Bill and I survived it. How did we do that, Bill? In the 8th chapter, verse 23, he said, I told you that you would die in your sin if you do not believe that I am the one who I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sin. See, he said that in verse 28. I mean, verse 23. 8th chapter, 23. See, he's been, he's been, see, you just came in. <laughs> we just dropped in out of conversations. It's been going out a pretty good long while. And what, what is their problem? They're religious people who are lost. They're thinking with a natural mind. In 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, 14 through 16, the natural man can't understand spiritual matters. They think they're foolish. These religious people are not saved. They think with the natural mind, not the spiritual mind. They don't have the Holy Spirit of God. They are the natural man, and everything seems foolish to them. The Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living in that order. You wonder why you're, you say, well, I'm saved, and your life is a mess. It's a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You've missed the part. It's a spiritual book for spiritual living. You got saved and you live the, under the world's book of hand rules and not the Bible. You know how you know it? Because you don't come to church. You're not interested in the, in the in-depth teaching of the Word of God. You're not interested in the details of the Word. Jesus said, if you will guard the details of the Word... I'm just saying. Jude 19. These are the ones that cause division. They're worldly-minded. They're devoid of the Holy Spirit. In John, the 8th chapter, verse 43 and 44, Jesus said, Why is my language not clear to you? I'll tell you, because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. 
He's not name calling. He's naming it right on the, here's your problem. You've gone to Cosmos Diabolicus. You know who's feeding you, who's feeding you what you believe? It's not coming from the Bible because I'm teaching the Bible and you're rejecting it. Therefore, what Bible, what Bible do you have? It's the world Bible and the author of it, of it is the devil. You're getting information somewhere. Listen, if it's six o'clock news, you're in trouble. Well, they finally come up with a word, fake news. How many of us didn't know that was true for years? <laughs> fake news. Take somebody, somebody out of the wild blue to come up with that because the politicians would never say that in a million years. It takes a non-politician to even say it. Then everybody goes like, boy, there's a good word. I wish I'd have coined that. I heard that word and I went, ta ting. Romans 8 9. However, you are not in the flesh, in the spirit. If indeed, here's how you check yourself if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, but if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. I mean, you know, your gut check is where are you in the Word of God? Because, listen, wherever you are in the Word of God is where the Word of God is in you. If this casual approach you have to Bible study is never going to work out in your life in a million years. It amazes me how many Christians live in sin and think sin is the answer to their life. Does that make sense? Come, let's go swim in the lake of fire. Does that make sense? Does it make sense to think that you can live in sin and somehow sin will be a good thing for you? How nutty is that? Let's go swim in the lake of fire business. I am amazed how many Christians think that. Christians that come out of this church, in fact. In John, the 8th chapter, verse 28, when you have lifted up the Son of Man then you will know that I am who I claim to be. I don't know. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? I don't know. I'm telling you, you must believe it, or you will, you will see death. If you believe that Christ is the answer to the sin problem, you will never see death. Never. No, never. And I don't care how many people lie to you, you'll never see death. You will never personally experience death, not in his first realm, nor in the second realm, not in the physical death in this life, nor in the second death in the next life. You think, you think this is not a marvelous thing that Jesus Christ came into this world to do for you and I? Here, here, and I'm going to wrap this thing up here in a minute. Here's my second point. I don't know where you think I am. I'm not sure I know where I am myself. I'm headed to get some lunch. Some banana pudding. At the moment, a person believes at, at the, mo the moment, at the moment, a person believes that Jesus died for his sins, that's anyone, was buried and raised from the dead according to the scripture, that person receives eight works of the Holy Spirit. He can never lose in time to turn in. Think about that for a moment. Nobody else has had this privilege. This is the church age. This is a new covenant. Nobody's had this privilege to receive eight works of the Holy Spirit that are life-changing, revolutionary, transformational ideas. I wrote them on your paper, adoption, baptism, indwelling, regeneration, sanctification, sealing, spiritual gifts, and spiritual life. I, I, they're all worth your study. I'm telling you that the moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, you receive these eight works of the Holy Spirit, you can never lose in time and eternity, and you don't get it because of some, oh, Lord, I promise I'll do this if you'll do this. None of that business. Oh, and I, listen, this is the grace salvation package. Fifty things you receive, you can never lose in time and eternity. Never! <laughs> never lose. Never lose. Never. 2 Corinthians 5.17, if anyone is in Christ, that's positional truth. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old things have passed away, like 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin. And behold, new things have come. That's the next 37 that are positive influences upon your life in Christ. 
That's the package of salvation. 50 things you can receive. You never lose in time and eternity. These unbelieving Jews that Jesus is talking to have, listen, are now going to be expre are expressing their position in Adam. You know, you have, there's a position in Adam, and there's an experience of that position in Adam. You, you know, you're a sinner in Adam, you also live it. Now, the word enmity. I'm just going to show you one. One of the 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin upon all mankind is enmity. Enmity, when enmity works out, that, that's hostility. You know enmity. It's hostility. You know what it can become? And it will become if it's not corrected by the grace of God. Do you know what en enmity becomes? Enemy. It is the same word. Enmity is the attitude Enemy is the result. Same word. Sometimes this word, same word is used enemy, and sometimes it's used enmity. Same word. One is the attitude, and the other is the character, the conduct. For example, for example, in Romans 5.10, for if while we were enemies... That's our word, enmity. Enmity has become an enemy. That's where these Jews are that are talking with Jesus today. If while we were enemies, we and here's the positive, we were reconciled, reconciled from being at enmity with God, reconciled to God through the death of his son, see, that's a grace package, isn't it? Reconciled, you don't do anything. He does it all, you get it. He takes your enmity, your enmity that causes you to be an enemy of the cross, he takes that at the point you believe, he takes that away and gives you reconciliation with God in his place. What an exchange, people. That's a grace exchange. It, it doesn't, it, he doesn't say, okay, now I want some changes in your life. No, he's already gave it. That's a transformational idea. If while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. Ephesians 2, 15 to 16. Watch this now. Watch this. By abolishing in his flesh on the cross our enmity, which is the law of commandments contained in ordinances. The law points you th that you are this condition and need Christ to save you, so that in himself he might make two into one new man, thus establishing peace with God, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross by having put to death the enmity. He takes our enmity, which makes us, which develops in us an enemy of the cross of Christ. At the point of salvation, he removes that, replaces it with reconciliation with God, and as a result, you now are at peace with God, which is the other, other end of enmity. Come on now. Please tell me you see that. This end here is enmity. I believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am reconciled. One of eight works of the blood of Christ. One of, one of nine works of the blood of Christ. I am reconciled. We do in the Eucharist. Reconciled. And on the backside, enmity is gone and peace with God is in. I've done nothing but believe the gospel. Christ has done all of the work to make that exchange. That's just one of many. And now, I am a reconciler. I am an ambassador with a message of reconciliation to the world. Isn't that wonderful? 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Let's close in a word of prayer. Al, if you'll close us. And after our prayer, then, Rick, after our prayer, we'll do our pledge.
Rather more grateful. Freed us from the sin of the world that allows us to enter into the kingdom of Christ and to live there forever. To be one of your children. To be secure, Father, to never lose salvation. To know that we can grow in grace. That we, we can see the face of God one day. Be there with him. We thank you for all that in Christ's name. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.